E o resto, cara, plano pro futuro? Pretende casar ou não? Não sei casar. Você já foi apaixonado na vida ou não? Já, pô. Tá? Já. Por quem? Pô, eu fui muito apaixonado pela Bruna. Você foi? Fui. Você tá bem hoje, Por isso que eu tava, por isso que eu ah. namorei com ela. Uhum. É difícil você ver uma pessoa que você gostou demais. beijando na boca dos outros caras da novela, complicado. não é? É difícil, cara. Fala complicado, a verdade. É complicado, viu? Essa... That's a bit bold, especially coming from a man who reportedly cheated on one of his girlfriends 92 times. Yes, someone actually counted it. If you think Neymar's performances over the years have been controversial, wait till the end of this deep dive into his love life. This is the question Neymar never asked himself. Why the heck can't he stay in a relationship? Neymar the Silver Santos Jr. has earned himself many nicknames since he first burst onto the scene. Before he left his beloved hometown, the Brazilian sensation used to be called Menino, a young boy who was destined to achieve great things. As soon as he made a few appearances for Santos, his compatriots and fans of Brazilian football started calling him Ojoia, the gem. Although he proved to the world that these were more or less accurate and well-deserved nicknames in due time, Neymar started accumulating other names along the way the goat that never was, the prince that never became the king. Much less promising and even downright heartbreaking for some. Yep, we're talking about you, Steve. The Brazilian's entire career was spoiled by long periods of injury, his unique understanding of fun, and most importantly, his love life, which was described as a hot mess more than we could count. If we were to talk about every single affair that affected the Brazilian's career, this could probably end up being our longest video to date. So instead of going down that road, we're going to talk about the most significant women who Neymar believed to be his significant other, but ended up just being another name in a seriously extensive list. And to kick things off, we have to go way back in time to meet the first woman Neymar would fall for, the very same woman who gave Neymar the most precious gift of his life. Since he was quite literally a child prodigy, Neymar gained notoriety in his home soil from a very young age. And before he turned 18, it was almost impossible for him to do anything under the radar. So his private life piqued the interest of Brazilian media, to say it the least. There he was, the next big thing Brazilian football would give to the world, aged only 17 and shining bright for Santos. It's an understatement to say that every step he took on and off the pitch was viewed with a microscopic lens. In his second professional season when he was just 18, BBC Sports South American football correspondent Mike Vickery described the young man as follows. The 18-year-old is a magnificent prospect. He is sleek and skillful, able to beat the defender on either side, capable of combining well and full of tricks he can put to productive use in and around the penalty area. Vickery, like every single football fan who watched the Campeonato Paulista in 2010, was in awe. Neymar had scored 14 goals in 19 games, and this was surely the highlight of his young career. While the young dribbling extraordinaire was wowing people thanks to his skills on the pitch, he was also turning a lot of heads off it too. While it was not for everyone, young girls were enamored with his style, but only one among them stood out for Neymar, a 17-year-old named Carolina Dantas. After meeting through a shared friend, the young duo instantly kicked, and that was the beginning of their relationship. In a few months, however, things took a side turn when Neymar allegedly started seeing another girl. No one knew back in the day that this was going to be some kind of a theme with the Brazilian forward. Right then and there, as swiftly as it started, Neymar and Dantas were no longer a theme. But that was not the end of their relationship. Far from it. Because shortly after the breakup, Dantas announced to Neymar that she was pregnant. According to French outlet Le Point, Neymar was shaken when he learned that he was set to become a father. Their kid, David Luca, could have shared the same fate with Cristiano Jr. and never got to know his mother. But Neymar and Dantas were more or less on the same page about raising their boy together. And thankfully, the Brazilian never really ducked his responsibilities as a father. Neymar and Dantes share custody of Davi Luca, and they're on extremely good terms well after a decade has gone by. Dantes has built herself a lovely family with a digital creator called Vinny Martinez, who Davi Luca calls Uncle Vinny. And he and Neymar are very supportive of each other as far as we can tell. Solid, united by the loyalty of a special woman who is part of the foundation of our lives, and who today offers us with this power and with her infallible faith that is more part of us these days than any other. A footballing sensation and a father at just 18. That's a fast start if I've ever seen one. This was, however, just the beginning for Neymar, both for his football-related exploits and those concerning his love life, which was to get only more complex with time. 
His first couple of professional seasons were just a foreshadowing of Neymar's rise to stardom. There weren't many doubters around, and if there were any, Neymar made sure that by the end of 2012, they too were aboard his very own hype train. In that year alone, the Brazilian racked up some of the most prestigious awards he could get his hands on. By the time the year finished, he was voted best player of the 2002 Recopa Sudamericana, the best forward of the 2012 Campeonato Brasileiro, and the 2012 South American Footballer of the Year. With such accolades, it was really hard to find a bigger Brazilian star, especially among his peers. But Neymar did find one. And not just anyone, mind you, but the one. Enter Bruno Reyes Maia, or as the world knows her, Bruna Marquezine, a prodigious young actress whose career started back when she was only five years old, three years before Neymar was even discovered by Santos. If Neymar's rise to stardom was fast, Bruna's was a blitz. Shortly after her first TV appearance, she was picked up by Foxy producers to be featured in telenovelas, quite possibly the only thing Brazilians love as much as they love football. By the time the duo first crossed paths in 2012, during the world-famous Rio Carnival by all accounts, Marquezine was known all over Brazil, and she already had about 10 telenovelas and a few feature films under her belt. Neymar was in every sense of the word, starstruck. Years down the road, he would remember the day he first laid eyes on her. As soon as I saw you, I wanted to be in your arms. I love you, my baby. Just as was the case with Carolina Dontas, Neymar was madly in love in an instant. The duo started seeing each other, and the entire country started seeing them all over the media. The attention the new couple received was not surprising to anyone. Dontas, with all due respect, was an ordinary young girl back when she met Neymar. But this time, not only was Neymar far more famous, but he was seeing an out-and-out -out movie star. The first year of the relationship passed in the blink of an eye, and the young lovers were just adorable, sharing their love for each other every chance they got. But the honeymoon phase was soon to be over, and both Neymar and Bruna were responsible for things inevitably going south. Not because of infidelity or anything, at least on this occasion, but because of their huge success in their respective fields. After dominating Brazilian football for about four years and making a name for himself not only in South America, but also around the world, Neymar's transfer to Europe had become unavoidable. And as we all know, it was Barcelona who were lucky and rich enough to sign him. This was certainly a step in the right direction for the talented Brazilian, but it was difficult to say the same thing concerning his private life. A year into their relationship, Bruna and Neymar were now nearly 9,000 kilometers apart. As they say, long-distance relationships were just a test to see how far love would travel. And in Neymar and Bruna's case, it didn't travel all that long. Some believe the distance was not the only thing that caused the couple to part ways. According to the Brazilian press, Neymar had started seeing his compatriot and model Larissa Oliveira even before he signed for Barcelona. In any case, almost as fast as they got together, the young lovers were separated. But as time would tell, this wasn't going to be the end of their story. Just a year later, when Brazil hosted the World Cup in 2014, Rumors of Neymar and Bruna getting back together started to surface, and they were all validated when Bruna was spotted in the stands waiting anxiously for her sweetheart to show up. Unfortunately, the World Cup ended in total disaster for Brazil and Neymar. They were kicked out of the tournament by Germany with a humiliating 7-1 loss. The score and the outcome of the tournament probably had nothing to do with Neymar's relationship with Bruna, but they didn't last long after it. Once again, they were separated. What happened on the pitch wasn't all that significant for the couple's survival, but what happened on set truly was. Neymar said it himself at the very beginning of this episode. He was, and who knows, maybe still is, an extremely jealous person. And Bruna Marquezine was no longer a child prodigy. She was now cast as an adult and prominent character in TV and film. When they were once again rumored to be an ensemble in 2016, rumors died down pretty quickly when Bruna played the role of Beatriz dos Santos, dancer and aspiring actress in the series Nada Sera Comorantes, the very same project in which she starred in her first nude scene on television. Not the most traditional, but certainly among the most persistent couples in the world. Neymar and Bruna tried to make things work for a very long time over very long distances, their on-again, off-again relationship lasted for about five years in total. And coincidentally, these were the greatest years of Neymar's career when he was part of Barcelona's deadly trio, MSM. In the very same period, his talents and stardom made him the most expensive transfer in the history of football. Both during the uptimes and downtimes of his relationship with Bruno, Neymar's faithfulness was always questioned. He was believed to be seeing Larissa Machado, Talia Ayala, Soraya Vucelic, and Gabriela Lenzi in different capacities, all in the space 
of one year, by the way, when Bruno finally called the end of their years-long struggle slash relationship in an interview with Quem magazine in Brazil, some fans tried to find a justification for the decision, as if sleeping with almost half of the world population was not enough. And even though an argument was made about Bruno supporting Lula versus Neymar's favorite political figure, Jair Bolsonaro, in the presidential elections made, at the end of the day, the result was the same. The story of Neymar and Bruno Marquezine was officially over. Neymar, of course, had another Bruno coming his way, and even more scandals to come, as if he hadn't racked up enough already. In 2021, after countless other women came and went into his life, including a certain Brazilian model called Najila Trindade, who accused Neymar of sexual assault in 2019, including American singer and songwriter Demi Lovato, including Brazilian singer and songwriter Anita, and American actress Chloe Grace Moretz, among many, many, many others. PSG's troubled star set sail to a brand new love story with another Bruna. Brazilian model Bruna Biancardi, that is. Seen at the Parc des Princes on multiple occasions, it didn't take long for his new Bruna to steal the headlines related to Neymar. Although the duo tried to keep their new relationship under wraps for a while, they went Instagram official in April of 2022. No one knows who sent the magical words at first, but it was Bruno Biancardi who said it first on Instagram, as she shared a cute photo on April 24 with a simple caption that read, Love you. The duo looked lively and lovely all right, but it didn't take them long to be spoiled by Neymar's biggest vice, his insatiable desire for women. After a few happy months, Neymar was back in the vicious cycle that defined his love life. On again, off again. The first time he got back together with Bruno Biancardi gave people who wanted to see Neymar settle a sense of optimism. That was when the duo got engaged and officially announced that they were expecting a baby. Despite the great news, however, Neymar kept going off track. In an article published at Metropolis written by Brazilian journalist Fabio Oliveira, Neymar's alleged affair with Brazilian blogger Fernando Campos was revealed. According to Oliveira, the duo not only spent the eve of Valentine's Day together, but they've also been seeing each other since the 2022 World Cup. That was a pretty serious accusation, which was only validated by Neymar's unexpected and frankly weird public apology to Biancardi. The highlight of the message was this. I don't know if we will work out, but today you are the certainty that I want to try. Our purpose will prevail, our love for our baby will win, and our love for each other will strengthen us. I love you. According to another Brazilian journalist, however, Neymar was very inspired as he had imagined himself countless times not only without Bruna Biancardi, but with other women as well. Writing for Correa Brasilense, journalist Tiago Sodre reported that Neymar had cheated on Biancardi 92 times since they first got together. The news broke around the same time Bruno Biancardi said, enough is enough. Only one month after becoming parents to a baby girl they named Mavia, they were separated. Remember how Neymar's story with Carolina Dantas ended shortly after becoming the father of Davi Luca? Talk about coming full circle. Apart from the hard to swallow revelations about his love life, Neymar had another shocker in his bag of tricks as he moved to Saudi Arabia at only 31 years old. It's anyone's guess if that was the main reason why it didn't work out for him and Bruno Biancardi, but it's safe to say that the prince who never got to be the king has finally come to terms with his destiny and turned the page. Now dealing with a terrible knee injury and trying to get back onto the pitch, Neymar will have a tough time getting back to his prime, especially if his old habits intervene. His lavish lifestyle, parties, and let's just say unique love life aside, as football fans, it gives us immense pleasure to see him back on the pitch as soon as possible. So hopefully, we'll get to talk about Neymar, the player, for a few more years. With that being said, we're going to wrap up this episode. Before we leave, though, we'd like to hear what you have to say about Neymar's future. Was moving to the Saudi Pro League the unofficial end of his career? Do you expect him to be part of the Selecao in the next World Cup? Be sure to let us know down below. And if you're in the mood for more Neymar-related drama, check out our Football Files episode on his disturbing history with Najila Trinjade. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.